Okay, we are set. So before we get started, can I get some reactions that we are all together, ready to start? Any quick reaction? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, I appreciate you all. So welcome to the first session, career session of the week. Um, it's going to be focusing on remote work tools. So before in week zero, we were into submitting CVs, our ideas to change the world. And then in week one, we looked into, um, in week one, we covered, uh, why am I forgetting everything? So in week one, we covered our peer mentorship and also our three real job, real world jobs, which also set the tone to what are we expecting um i mean what are the hiring managers expecting to we be to us when we get to complete the training and also we looked into peer mentorship for us to get to know each other more and also to create this kind of connections and friendships to get to know to get to know each other obviously and also to get to learn from each other and to get to ask ourselves how can we connect much more throughout the training, be the training buddies. So I believe it was a good exercise from what we have started to review so far. I can see like it has, a, it has been like a good outcome. So for now, as we have completed that, we are progressing into then what kind of things are we going to be needing when we get into the workplace, specifically when we get into the workplace anything from problem solving, anything from communications, anything from strategic thinking, design thinking, decision making, everything around how to be like the best teammates or the best employee of any company is what we'll be covering throughout the training, the career session in the training. So, but we are starting with the most essential one when you get into the workplace and majority of the time it might be a remote workplace what, how how do you get yourself up and running to different platforms that they use in general because of course as tech people you already have different dashboards that you will be working in i mean the dashboard that you already use with your um tech activities but then in general as an employee as a teammate of a certain company, big or startup, what kind of other general kind of tools, remote settings or remote companies use that you have to be familiar with. We use some of those tools here at uh, Ten Academy, but we also want you to have an experience of how other tools looks like. So that is the main reason for this specific challenge. So welcome, it's the remote work tools that we are going to be looking at as they empower success in the digital workspace. So a quick one, when we keep saying what is remote work, does everyone understand what it means? Or anyone who wants just to share quickly like a very short explanation of when someone say, I will be working remotely, what they mean specifically? Anyone? A quick person, this is an easy question, I believe. Okay, Shamil. Okay, uh, I believe remote work means uh, a work that is uh, not from confined by a physical space mm -hmm. with a location or something like that. Okay, that is great. You can do remotely. Yeah, you are very correct. You are very correct. Working any in any other side aside from the office, physical or traditional space that we are used to. So I wanted to ensure that we all understand what does remote work mean and ensure that we are on the same page and that we keep going. So we have like three types actually of uh, work settings the one is the physical traditional office work setting that we are used to a company having an office where you have to go to and sit on your table and do the work and then number two we have the remote work where you work anywhere around the world like you are allowed to work anywhere around the world your location doesn't matter 
where you 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 set your laptop it doesn't matter if you can take a workspace in your area or set an office in your room like it doesn't matter it's remote work so your location or your state of living everything doesn't matter it's just remote as long as you deliver so you are like in a digital workspace with your whole team and then we have the hybrid work model where it's a mix it's a mixture like you have some of the days like two days that you have to come to the office and also three days of where you can work from anywhere either at your home in a cafeteria in a workplace anywhere so we have those three forms of work settings physical traditional one hybrid and then remote so we are focusing on the remote one because what we encourage or what we want at the end of the training is that everyone will be fortunate enough to land these remote uh, remote jobs and of course many of the technical roles are not being for i mean different companies are not focusing uh, their remote roles on any location because uh the knowledge technology is currently everywhere so either if they prefer cost cutting and it's a company in the us they are going to look for countries where the cost of living is very low for instance in majority of the east african countries our cost of living is low so the salaries it won't be a high cost for them if they were supposed to pay a data engineer in the us uh to pay him for instance like 80k per year and according to our cost of living for instance here in rwanda uh then i won't be have I, I won't have to be paid 80k it will be something around 40k so different companies have reasons to set their uh remote work settings but majority of them is for cost cutting and it's going to most of the tech roles so that's why what that's what we focus on here and of course we are also a remote training um company and everyone is just doing the training from the comfort of their home or their cafeteria of, or of a library, wherever you are, we are also learning remote. So yeah, I believe that is like very clear and easy to understand. But by definition, remote work is a work arrangement where employees perform their job tasks and responsibilities from a location other than the traditional office, often using technology to connect and collaborate. We focus on this word, often using technology to connect and collaborate. That's what we are going to be looking here. So why remote work specifically? These are the major like three points that are like the reasons for many companies or many employees to choose to work remotely instead of working traditional in the office. Number one, it improves work-life balance. Imagine when you are just supposed to deliver like the company doesn't care if you are working in the morning or afternoon or if you're working at night as long as you meet the deadlines and as long as you deliver efficiently so it improves work-life balance because you are able to just focus on your life as as you are also working and then the global talent pool access to majority of the companies like for instance if i had a I have a company set up here in rwanda and i need some software engineers from ethiopia i'm able to do that and to work with them efficiently that's because of remote work and also it reduces commute stress from the employee perspective those who do not like to queue up on different bus stations or if you are driving then getting held up into the traffic or if you're taking a train or a metro and then it takes forever for you to get to where you are and you get to the work when you're already stressed and out of the mood of working you know remote work really solves this that's why you will see even different companies that are based in that country like we have companies that are set here in rwanda but it's fully remote they have a small office if you want to come in an easy calm environment then you go there but you are not supposed to so majority of them do this just to reduce commute stress and also so but how does it work how do we get to collaborate and work together successfully in a remote work setting we have four categories of tools that make remote work efficiently and those categories are in these four i mean those categories are as follows first of all we have the communication category so we always need tools that helps us with everything communication 
and then collaboration, and then project management, and then time management. These are the majority of them, because the key thing we need in a remote setting is communication, like very, very fast communication. And then collaboration, because of course, different departments need to synergize, or if you are like two, three people in a department of 50 people, you need to collaborate on the same project you are working on. So we need tools for this. And then when it comes to project management, when we have different projects that have a lot of things aligned to them in regards to the processes, the timelines, the budgets, the everything, the resources you need, like everything, it has to be managed. It has to have a tool that is specifically allocated to different projects that you are currently working on. And then time management, because when you are working remotely, you most of the time have our own different time zones. So you need something that helps you align your time, either for stand-ups or catch-up calls or time with the client or time with the clients, like everything. So we always need also tools to help us manage our time as a remote, um, as a remote workplace. So imagine these categories as the building blocks for your digital workspace. If you lack one of them, um, I'm not sure how you how it might be operating there might be some chaos or some conflict between different tasks of or different people if you lacked one of these these are like the very essential so that's why we call them building blocks for your digital workplace examples of these tools then when it comes to communication we can speak we can be like um we can mention something like slack it helps us with communication but also we can mention zoom we can mention uh, Microsoft Teams, we can mention um, Google Meet, and anything that allows us to communicate either verbally or sending something written. And then when it comes to collaboration, majority of the companies, they use Notion. They use Notion. That's where every morning, even here at Ten Academy, every week, I just go check my Notion, and I'm like, these are the questions of probably Aaron wants to ask me, or these are the tasks he wants me to focus on like early on Monday, like everything collaboration, it goes on Notion. Everything collaboration, every resource that I want to see, for instance, I want to see how they have been running the effectiveness of career sessions back in batch four, that's like back in 2019, you know? So I go there, all the information are stored on Notion. So anything collaboration goes on Notion. And then when we talk about project management, when we are working, for instance, on which projects? Currently, we have a, pro a new program called uh, University to Job. We have another one called Kifia. They are mostly based in Ethiopia. So to the people in Ethiopia, you probably heard of those two. So we use Trello just for these projects, these two projects, to work on them because Trello is specifically for project management. Anything that comes to um, the project description, the budgets, the timeline, who's responsible for what, the partnership you are going to be seeking. I mean, everything that goes with project management, the majority of the companies use Trello. So here we also use Trello. And then time management, Google Calendar. We have been facing these uh, even on the interview times, just to the people who do you know about Google Calendar before. But I think out of these three, Google Calendar is the most known because some people also use it in their daily activities just to set a reminder if you have to visit a friend on Saturday and you know that you are busy with 10 academic trainees and you might forget. So you put it on your Google Calendar for you to not forget. So anything around that. Um, so these are the like quick examples of the majority of famous tools that we use in these four main categories that we need to succeed in a remote work setting. So this is the future of remote work. Um, you know, remote work it kind of became a trending thing when it was in COVID, when everyone was forced to work from home because of the quarantine and everything. But, you know, there is the future to remote work because everything is getting remote. Everyone saw the benefits of it. And we are seeing this future coming. We will be having flexible work arrangements. We'll be having advanced collaboration technologies. Like since remote work came, everything boomed. I think that's when we even started to hear of Zoom, like even 
the people who do not know Zoom by that time, they came to know about those. So we'll be having like advanced collaboration technologies, even that are bigger than these ones we have now. And then um, remote works impact on traditional office setups that is going to be like major positive impacts on traditional office setups because um, it, the traditional office setups, yes, it comes, it, it has the do, the, the pros, but also it has major cons and majority of the people actually prefer going for, um, oh, but before I say this, actually I can ask, um, among us, if you were to choose the two, we're going in an office or working remotely currently in your current reality in reality current state where you live what would you prefer remote work or office work what would you prefer can you like, pick okay i'm seeing remote yes in the chat box yeah definitely remote oh yeah thanks however from hybrid as well uh, hybrid would uh, also better okay how about office people? Hybrid, Shayla, remote, 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 remote. Okay. How about offices? <laughs> I know different people would prefer offices, like to those who like chocolate presents from different birthdays. Clearly, there are some good things that come with working, <laughs> with working in the office. But yeah. So, I, I, I like the office, but however, it needs to be fun office, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jose, I, I get your idea. Abebe also said, if the office is in Silicon Valley, absolutely, I'm going. Okay. <laughs> okay, probably then it depends with the location. But overall, um, you know, with our life, work life balance and everything, really, um, yeah. It, remote work works better, works better for majority of the people. So now let's look at the challenge document. Why are we learning at, uh, on remote tools and also what kind of, how can we practice this? How can we practice using them? So this is the challenge document. It's already shared in the drive uh, where you saw your technical resources. There is another folder for career resources so you can go there and then you will find both of these two documents there the deadline for submission uh is on saturday submission deadline is also on saturday 4th may 8 p.m utc so we have a, a background like with everything detailed with the information you need to work on the exercise that we have here the main task that we have here but let's go through it so what do we have in the background? We have the definition of the remote work. Remote work is a practice of having employees carry out their duties away from the central office. Examples of such places can include workers' home, private offices, shared workspaces, or any other location. And then what does the term onboarding mean? Because you are going to be, use, you are going to be seeing this term used in the exercise below. So what does it mean? The term onboarding describes the procedures used to integrate new hires and employees into the company. In addition to learning about the organization's structure, culture, vision, mission, and values, it also contains activities that help new hires complete the first hire orientation process. Onboarding simply, it's the process you go into when you join another company. Like they are trying to get you used to what kind of tools they use, you, you get to learn more about their mission, uh, about their values, about the culture of the company. So the onboarding is like the very first week or first two weeks or first month, depend on the company, uh, of your working in a new company. So it's specifically what the term onboarding means. And then why remote work? Employees can completely customize their working setup, like if you're a person who doesn't like to see other people moving around, then you are free to set up your solo office in your room and then you can work comfortably. And then you may assist, you may, you may assist employees with disabilities 
of course, absolutely. Then greater talent pool for corporations with nearly no region restrictions. We know like people from countries that are not mostly considered for high paying jobs. You know, we know that because we are majority are from the, um, how do you call them? Third world countries, developing countries. So we know that how it was hard to work for like a company, for instance, like Google in the US, that it's like a dream coming true. It's like something that we never used to get used to, that it can happen, but now it can happen. So we are fortunate for this. And then also employees as well as employers save money in time traveling, of course. Employees save money for uh, renting offices. Um, anything that comes with securing your employees in an office. And then for employers, of course, it saves us money in term traveling, completely understandable. Then employee productivity can increase with higher autonomy and fewer interruptions at work. Of course, your productivity increases when you are working in your favorable place. You know, like in a place where you are feeling like you have your full potential or you are using your full potential just to do the work. Just because you like the, the place. So it can increase your productivity and also having the flexibility of working in any hour, at any hours of your choosing, really that increases productivity. And then the working environment can entirely be customized by employees, however you like. Then companies and organizations are utilizing these digital management tools and services to assist them manage their work as remote work becomes more prevalent on a global scale. And below we have the handful of the most common remote work tools and applications. We have Google Calendar, we have Slack, Notion, and then Trello. So Google Calendar, there is a link that goes to the site where you can read more and actually gather different information you can use to work on the exercise we have below here. So we already have, uh, we already have explained what we use this for. Google Calendar is for time management. Notion is for collaboration. Trello is for specifically project management. Notion also they say that it's for project management because you can run projects there, but majority of the time it's for collaboration. For instance, uh, what kind of another example can I give you on Notion? Um, uh, okay, let's say we have uh, everything is done and we have a new cohort coming, cohort C. That's an example. We have an, a new cohort coming, cohort C, and we need to set them up and running from week zero, week one, week two, up to week 12 of the training period. So that's where we go and put like everything we are planning to do. Aside from the project is already there. Remember the project is a bigger scale of everything. Like the budget is going to require you. It's everything big before the project starts. But when the project starts, we use Notion where I go and say the careers contest that we will run in this week is this and that. And then the technical team, Nathaniel, Yabi, Rehmet, they also are come and add everything add notes that we can take and then the cohort manager who is Rodas come and be able to sort everything, do the schedules, make any necessary announcement, do resource uh, storage where we have to store different materials that they will be, the trainees will be using, like everything. Everything is done on Notion and that's why we call it a project management but also a collaboration space. And then Slack is digital headquarters. <laughs> yeah, they, but it, it's, it's like a slang to everything. To, to majority of the companies that work remotely, like free remotely, Slack is like a digital headquarter. That's where everything happens. That's where everyone is. That's where everyone talk. That's why, I mean, any small or big conversation is where it happens. And then Trello, we saw that is for project management. Anything big about project management. And then the number one task, we have links here. Remember to go check them out, these websites. And then what is the task? So you have joined the company and your company have moved to a different location and your team manager have tasked you with setting up the office workflow tools 
to assist with onboarding a new colleague. There's a, okay. Uh -huh. With onboarding a new colleague in your team who has never used these tools before, the workflow tools you have to set up are Slack, Notion, Google Calendar, and then Trello. So what is the main task? The main task number one, imagine that Pascaline, who is me, is the new member joining your team. Follow the below instructions and answer the questions we have. What instructions do we have on Google Calendar? On Google Calendar, you have to go and access your Google Calendar, create new calendar specifically for onboarding meeting Pascaline, just like this. Schedule a weekly check-in team meeting and invite the new team member who is Pascaline. I believe I have to be. Let me share my email quickly for those who can find it on Slack. Mm -hmm. So this is my email you will use to invite me. And then in the description part, add an important description of what that weekly meeting will be about. So this is just up to you. It's just a weekly check-in. So what do you think the weekly check-in will be focusing on in general? That's why we wrote in general. So write anything you want that you believe a weekly check-in with your new team member joining your team and focus on. Then set up reminders for that weekly team meeting. Set up reminders. It can be five minutes reminder or 15 minutes or before 30 minutes, anything, but set up reminders. And then when you are done, take the screenshot of your Google Calendar showing the scheduled event. So this is the screenshot we want. Let me go quickly to this one. Mm, one minute, okay. So this is not uh, this is not the the kind of screenshot we want because when you have saved everything, then you have this small thing that shows you that you have booked something on your Google Calendar. So do not take a screenshot of this. Go inside where you felt all informations here, where you felt the name, you invited me, added everything, added the reminders, added the description, and then take this screenshot here. This is where you will take your screenshot, okay? Let's go back. This is about the Google Calendar. And then on Slack, create a new Slack workspace named onboarding new member and create three new channels in addition to the ones which Slack auto creates. Of course, when you join, uh, a new Slack environment, Slack suggests some of the channels you can join. So ignore these ones and then create your three new channels. You can name them however you want, just according to um, what you feel you and Pascaline, your team member, would be talking about. Um, yeah, I was going to show you everything, but I will be showing off the work. Okay, but we understand what channel has been. For instance, in our Slack channel, different channels are like all, all resources, all community buildings, those kind of channels. So also create three new channels, name them however you want. Then send Pascaline an invite link, invite them to join the Slack workspace. Then post a welcome message in the channel introducing the purpose of the Slack workspace and its objective. Remember this. And then initiate a discussion about the experience so far in the company and ask for their input. Just post there any one message that talks about their experience so far in the company and also asking for the input. And then number last, take a screenshot of the Slack channel with the introduction message and discussion visible. So you will take a screenshot of where this is visible, where this is visible. I believe that is clear. And then on Notion, you are going to set up a task board in Notion using Kanban format. This is the most uh, format that is mostly used when you are about to create something on Notion. So Kanban format. 
On this task board, you should list five key exercises you have completed for the training at Ten Academy in week zero and week one. So among many exercises you did in week zero and week one, you are going to pick five and then you list them there in your task board along with the key feedbacks you received from your tutors. So it's just the task and the feedback. Why did we say that? Um, why did we say on week zero and week one? It's because you have received feedback for week zero, but you haven't received feedback for week one. But you should, you should receive this kind of feedback by Thursday. So by Thursday, you are able to see uh, other feedbacks provided to you in regards to your week one submissions. So you are going to be picking five key exercises among technical and non-technical, technical and careers, and then you write them there along with the feedback that you have on your tanks platform. That's the feedback from the tutors, and then you put them there. Then next step, you are going to link your Notion task board to the Slack workspace you have created. Link your Notion task board on the Slack workspace you have created. You can do this using Slack up directory, easy one. Please choose the channel that Pascaline has joined to link your Notion account to. Ensure this as well. Then using your Notion account, create a public page for the task view and provide this link in the Slack channel. I forgot last, take a screenshot. of the task board you created um you created above i believe that's easy to understand take a screenshot of the task board you created here which is this one and then yeah you will see where to put it and then Trello, you are going to create a new Trello board named onboarding process. Then set up columns on the board for to do, in progress, review, and completed. These are the columns you have to have in your board on Trello. Then create task cards for the onboarding week and tasks in the to do column. In your to do column, you should have the following three tasks. Introduction to the company in job description, company platform tour, and introduction to the current projects. So these are the three tasks that you should be having in the to-do column. So just for you to see, to learn how do you add tasks in the columns you have on your Trello board. And then, okay. yes, please. Um, I can see uh, the screen. Uh, are you presenting the Trello board? No, I'm presenting the challenge document. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. So my experience with Jira uh, and Trello mm -hmm. is that you have to uh, subscribe or do we require? I, no, there is a few versions for everything here. We were going to talk about it at last, but there is a free okay. version for everything here. So you are able to create your accounts with no worries. The free version is a one month uh, version, right? Come again? The free version is uh, for free for one month. I can check where it is now, but I know that I use Trello for free for my own projects. So okay. Okay. there is a free version to it. Yeah. Okay. But let's check quickly. One minute, I'm checking. Okay, I'm here. Before I even log in, they say uh, sign up is free. There are just some of the features you cannot access if you do not have premium. But for the task we have here, they are just easy tasks. So it won't just require you any premium account to do your assignment. So here we are. Okay. Okay, Joseph? Okay. okay. And then uh, we were here, you are going to be moving one task to in progress column, move another task to review column. 
So among the three tasks that we have, you are going to be moving one of these tasks in progress and then another task in review column. And then take a screenshot of the trail board with the task cards visible. So after completing all these tasks on Google Calendar, Slack, and Notion and Trello, create a Google slide of PP or PPT. When we say Google slide, it's creating a PowerPoint, but on Google. No? Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, on Google. But when we say PPT, then a PowerPoint is just like an offline PowerPoint that we are used to. So you can just do both. There are either way PowerPoints. So with the guide, you are going to create a PowerPoint with the guide on how you did each step on each of these platforms, and then add final results, screenshots, the ones you took after every task at the end of each guide. So note, the guide should be clear that a new member, Pascaline, can follow it to do the same task you did. Remember, you are trying to onboard a new member to have her know how to use these platforms. So your guide, it should be clear. It should be like, you have to go on Google, you choose Google Calendar, you click this, you click that. It's actually so easy, super easy. And then just in steps, you click, you move this, you do that, you click save, and that is done. So just like an easy to understand guide. And then the Google Slides of PPT title should be guidance on remote work. So when you start your PPT or Google Slide, have it have this title, guidance on remote work tools. Then the slides should be simple, clean, and professional. Sorry, 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 excuse me. Then bullet points are very fine, very acceptable. The goal will be for this slide deck to be ready to use in real work environment, like to be shared with new members that will be joining your team, even after Pascaline. Use a maximum six slides for this first exercise. Six slides, they, they are maximum, because actually we have like four things that you have to put a screenshot here, like you have to put a screenshot here, and then put the guidance next to it, and that's one slide. So just for you to save your space on your PowerPoint. So one picture here, then the guide here, and then the slide is done, and then you continue. So that's why we said six slides maximum, but you can even use four slides maximum. And then task number two, you are going to look up, you can search this, and write a step-by-step -step guide showing your new members how to embed a new task in your Notion Kanban board and move it from back and to move it from backlog to active to complete. And then the guide in the Google Slide, you are going to be adding this guide in the Google Slide you created in exercise one. You can use maximum um, for the sorry, for this second exercise, you can use maximum three side slides. And then task number three, write a brief guide explanation showing new members how to add a new member to their workspace on Slack, how to add a new member on Slack, then add a guide on Google Slide and um, on the Google Slide created in exercise one. So it's just like one Google Slide, but we are showing you the limit you have, the limit slide you have to spend on each question. So here, the limit slide is one. Then the last task is to provide a guide on how to embed apps into Notion, like apps like Google, Figma, YouTube, everything. How do you embed these tasks, apps into Notion? And then use maximum one slide for this question as well. So we have these links here, um, links shared here. You can find majority of the information here. This is like an easy task. You just get the guides, uh, from this kind of website, and then you practice it, everything, and then you take the screenshots, and then submit. It's an easy exercise. Um, then where were we on submission on text? Yeah, I was mentioning that you have been provided with links, which will direct you to the information you need in order to complete the above exercise. But please know that, however, this exercise cannot be completed based on the information in those links only. So you have to even search more, um, you know, for you to understand if something is not mentioned on those websites directly.
we have the marking rubrics here. So you are able to see how many you are going to be getting on answering correctly every question. And that would be it. Then the rest of it is we will be looking on the overall presentation, the quality of the Google Slides as mentioned, how it's organized and then the visual appearance of it. And then the overall writing, everything from glam, grammar, everything from um, any, yeah, majority is just grammar mistakes. So yeah. I think I had a question. Okay, uh, yes, Wanderer, you can go ahead. Uh, I wanted to ask a question on Notion. Mm -hmm. Can I yes. just clone um, uh, one of the Notions that I use for Ten Academy and then I use that instead of having to create one on my own, like creating it from scratch? Can I just clone it? Let me take out the. Uh, no. No. Oh, do you, are you saying. You have the information that is access and to I input the information that is required based on this task. No, 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 you create another one. It's much easier because do you have access to 10 Academy's notion? Martin, tell me if I'm confusing you, but you have to create like new accounts. That's when you can put everything there from scratch yes. by yourself. It's much easier. No, because they send us an notion every week. So I could just clone that one. And clone no. which one? But you can, can I stop sharing my screen and just show me what they're referring to? Like the one in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I can't share my screen because I'm using mm -hmm. my phone. Uh, what I'm saying is that when you already have an account, you can copy it in print notion, and then I can view mm. it consecutively. Oh, like but I, I, can, I can view the notion so that you sent for the day. Link to the zero, week one, week two. Mm -hmm. So can I clone it, and then I edit it, and I delete out the information, then I add the information that is required for this this task okay I'll see. Uh, if you already have a notion account then there is no need to create another one but as long as you put in uh the information that i ask here and you take a screenshot everything is visible then it doesn't matter how long you've had the accounts it's okay did i answer you well or did i just confuse you again I, no, 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 it's okay. I, I, I understand what you're saying. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Uh, is it clear? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and just enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, like majority of the people in CBS yesterday, they were saying uh, they learned how to use different remote tools just be because of because of Ten Academy because they are here. So I believe they were they were mentioning uh, Notion or probably Slack or even Google Meet. So I am happy. I am happy that we started learning that. And I'm also happy that we are going to be having this um, further or advanced practical exercise just to get used to these because we are actually going to be using them uh, moving forward. Let me share the link to the folder of the documents, Grace, quickly. Let me know if you can access it. Do you have access? No. Oh, no access, okay. So let me alert. Throw this like right now. Okay. 
we'll just we give you access very shortly. All right. Uh, but that is it for the day. Thank you so much all for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of the schedule we have. Thank you.